Sanath God, we're actually at war with God. Now, what is sin if we are at war with God? What should we find out what sin is? The Bible definition of sin is sin is violation of God's law. For instance, uh, the Bible says that uh, lying is the ninth commandment. You shouldn't bear a false witness or lie or steal or commit adultery. Jesus says, you've heard it said, oh, you shouldn't commit adultery. And he says, if you look at a person to lust after them, they've committed adultery with that person in your heart. The Bible makes it very clear that if you're Nobody looks to the Father except through me. There's only one way to God, guys. Now, in our multicultural society, where it's offensive to say something, it's absolute. Jesus made an absolute statement, and he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me. I'm sorry if you're in another religion, but you've been deceived. And I just want to warn you out of love to turn from that false religion and turn towards Jesus Christ. He'll save you. You know, he said the guy named Paul who was going to kill the early members of the church. He may be as far away from God as you can get, but he can save anybody. That's how great his mercy is, is that he can save anybody of any stand from any time. You're looking at a man up here who's a thief, a liar, an adulterer, and a blasphemer, but God forgive me, he showed me mercy. Today I give it thanks because he showed me mercy through Jesus Christ, my Lord. The Bible says that it's appointed for us all to die once. Every last one of us have that in common. Black, white, brown, tall, short, fat, and skinny. There's going to make a difference. We all have the same in common. We have the same before God. And he's not going to take any excuses on that day. So we're already guilty before God because we walk this world. We're guilty sinners. We've all lied probably more times than we can count. We've probably stolen stuff if we're honest. If we took a videotape of our, of our mind and what we see, we wouldn't want to show it to most of our friends because of the wicked thoughts that go on through our minds during the week. But the Bible says that God, if He forgives you, He will mercy you. No more than you can have a day of Thanksgiving because Jesus Christ is set you free. The Bible says that we're slain to sin. Sin is punished for a season. But when it runs into court, it's dead. You'll be thrown into hell, and then eventually it will lake a fire. You know, Jesus talks more about hell in the New Testament than he does about heaven, believe it or not, because unfortunately most people will go there. Even people that are professing Christians, many of them will go there, but they have an exterior faith. But they're not going to believe in the truly born again. But the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Now, Jesus Christ is the Lord of the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord of the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord of the Lord. the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The Bible says that we're dead in our sins. It says that we're walking, walking dead men and we're enemies of God separated by our wicked works. Now how do you become a friend of God? Because God called Abraham his, his friend and it was by faith. Abraham was saved by faith alone. And that's the way you must come. You must come as a child and beg the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins and turn from them and trust in his bloodshed alone. You know, the prophet Isaiah predicted the way Jesus would die 600 years before he was even born. How the world could I say it right then if he never even met Jesus? Because he was divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Bible is full of prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. You can read it for yourself. The Old Testament is chock full of hundreds of prophecies that were fulfilled by Jesus. Now, how could he fulfill them if he was not God or just lucky? I'm not going to go with the lucky part, but he's God incarnate. And he says in the Bible in John 3.36, I've got this uh, verse over here. It says, he who believes in the Son has life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, and the wrath of God abides upon him. That's a pretty serious scripture, but I just want to warn you because I love you, and I don't want to see any of you go to hell. I don't get paid for this. I don't earn any money for this. All I do is I want to make sure that you're right with the Lord Jesus Christ on Judgment Day. The Bible, Jesus says this very clearly. He says, I am the way, the truth and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're depending on your own goodness or some sort of work system to get yourself into the kingdom, the Bible says that our good works are as filthy rags before God who is holy. That's the one thing that most people forget about the Bible. It's the only uh, phrase or the only statement given about God's character mentioned three times in a row is that God is holy, holy, holy. Now think about that for a second. If God says that his eyes, that he requires holiness to enter into the kingdom of heaven, how do you and I become holy? We've got to turn loose of our sin, and we've got to trust Jesus. He's the only one that can save us from our sin. The Bible makes that very clear, that if you don't have bloodshed on the day of judgment, that you won't go free. And I beg, I plead with you, and I hope that you would consider the statement from this guy standing on the street corner here. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have an idea what day we're going to die. 
On September 11th, all those people went into the World Trade Center, and they had no clue that they were going to die that day. A lot of us don't have a clue that they were going to be five minutes from now, it could be 50 years from now. The Bible says that we have to be right with the Lord. There's only one way that any of us can be forgiven. I wish every one of you would just take that minute and think about that. Am I truly right with the Lord Jesus Christ? Have I truly turned from my sins and trusted in Him alone? The Bible says that if you repent and trust Him, that He'll forgive you. That He'll give you eternal life. The Bible says that He'll grant us eternal life and we'll be with Him forever in the kingdom of heaven. Most of you, unfortunately, I believe what the Bible says, that most people will say on the, on the Lord Jesus Christ that they believed on Him, but they weren't true followers of His. Ladies and gentlemen, please check yourself. Check and make sure that you're real. There's nothing more precious than your soul. Your soul is worth more than the lottery that's 200 or 300 million dollars right now. Your soul is priceless. Make sure that you're right in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a question that you ran across some crazy guy on the street corner. The Lord puts you here in front of me so that you would hear His Word. The Bible claims that you have to repent and trust Jesus. Now, you're, you're, you have the information. You have to do something with it. That means you have to turn loose of your sin, and you have to trust Him. And what is sin? Well, the Bible makes it real clear that sin is transgression of God's Ten Commandments. That's why... The Ten Commandments are being pulled down all across the country, schools, courthouses, because nobody wants you to know the knowledge of your sin. If you don't know that you're a sinner, you won't truly repent and trust Jesus. The Ninth Commandment commands that we are never supposed to lie. We're never supposed to bear false witness. Most of us have lied more times than we can remember. I can't remember how many times that I've lied in my life. The Bible says that we're never supposed to steal anything. The Eighth Commandment explicitly says to never steal anything. That includes cheap time from your boss, or maybe stealing answers from a friend of yours. But see, God is a holy God. He can't look upon sin. He hates sin. He destroyed the world in the time of Noah because of sin. You know, here's an interesting little side note. My wife, I just married her. I've only been married for about two and a half months. She's from Sri Lanka. And uh, she survived the tsunami that hit Sri Lanka about uh, four or six years ago. She survived it by running into the second, third floor of the building because the wave was about 10 to 20 feet tall. Now think about that for a second. If you knew that there was a tidal wave coming, you would run for your life to get up and save yourself. In the same respect, there is a tidal wave coming. It's called the wrath of God. God is a just God, and He says He'll punish sin wherever it's found. That includes liars, thieves, adulterers, blasphemers, people that disobey their parents, people that break the Sabbath day. Any of those things will bring the wrath of God down on you. I just want to warn you. I just want to warn you. I just want to warn you that that wrath is coming like a tidal wave towards you. And the only way that you can be saved is through Jesus Christ. The Bible says that you must repent. But that's the real hook right there is that most people don't want to repent. They want to keep on in their sin. They love their fornication. They love their drunkenness. They love their drugs. They like to lie and steal. They love their pride. And the Bible says that God opposes the proud, but He gives grace to those who will humble themselves in front of Him and trust Him with all their heart, mind, soul, mind, and strength. The Bible is calling us all to repent. The first word out of Jesus' mouth when He started preaching was repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's calling you to repent today. That's something you can truly be thankful for, is that a God that was angry with your sin at one time, and will give you mercy. That's a wonderful thing that guilty sinners like myself and yourself can go free on Judgment Day, only because of what Jesus Christ did. Ladies and gentlemen, your time might be running out, but I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to repent, to trust Jesus, to turn, let go of your worldly goods, to turn loose of, of, to turn loose of everything that has, keeps you away from the living God. The Bible says there's a day coming when many will say unto me, Lord, Lord, didn't I, didn't I heal the sick in your name? Didn't I raise the dead in your name? And he'll say, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness, I never knew you. The Bible is very clear that there's many people that are religious, but they don't truly know the Lord Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a day coming, I have to tell you, that many of us will be disappointed. Many of us will say, many of us will say that we've lived a good life, but God's standard for good is absolute and total perfection. The Bible, Jesus claims from the Sermon of the Mount, He says, Be ye perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. His demand for our lives is absolute and total perfection. He doesn't tell us to try real hard. He tells us to live a life of perfection, which we can't do. Most of us can't do it, or most of us don't even desire to do it. 
But the Bible says that you can be made perfect in the sight of God because of what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. The Bible says that Jesus died a horrible life. He lived a sinless life. He fulfilled all the Old Testament prophecies. He kept all the laws that you and I can't continue. You know that Jesus never lied. Jesus never stole anything. Jesus never committed adultery. But you know what? You can accept His righteousness on your behalf. That's the wonderful thing. That God will give you His righteousness. Okay, the Bible says that we are saved by grace and faith. This is not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, or any other two folks. God will save you, but you've got to repent. You've got to trust and come along and save you. The Bible claims that right here is God's bringing you to save a whole other society. He's going to look at the same thing as God has eternal life. But he that is not obeyed himself will not see eternal life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. Thank you. 